On March 11, 2011, a severe accident occurred at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. With the support of numerous partners, we are steadily moving forward with the decommissioning process. We would like to show you what the power station looks like now compared to when the accident occurred. When all power was lost in units one through three, the reactors could no longer be cooled and the fuel melted. This caused the generation of a large amount of hydrogen, which ultimately resulted in the hydrogen explosions in units one and three and four, which was connected to unit three. Currently, all units have been brought under control and are being stably cooled. This was the Unit 1 building at the time of the accident. At Unit 1, rubble is being removed from inside the reactor building in preparation to remove fuel from the spent fuel pool. The next step will be to install a large cover and continue rubble removal work under the cover. Internal explorations of the PCV are being conducted in preparation for fuel debris removal. At Unit 2, the top blowout panels on the sides of the reactor building were opened by the hydrogen explosion at Unit 1. This allowed built-up hydrogen to escape thereby avoiding a hydrogen explosion. Currently, these panels have been closed in preparations to remove fuel from the spent fuel pool in the safest manner possible are underway to give peace of mind to the local community. Fuel debris removal will start at Unit 2. From past explorations, we have confirmed that deposits which are thought to be fuel debris, can be grasped and moved. At Unit 3, fuel removal from the spent fuel pool is underway. Underwater explorations conducted in preparation for fuel debris removal found structures and deposits inside the PCV, which appear to have melted and fallen from above. At Unit 4, all fuel was removed from the spent fuel pool, thereby eliminating potential risks. At the seaside area, rubble was scattered everywhere. Highly radioactive rubble was removed and radiation levels were lowered. The removed rubble was collected and is being stored on the premises. And waste-related facilities for storage and incineration are now being constructed on the north side of the site. Progress has also been made with countermeasures for earthquakes and tsunami. Even though the seismic resistance of the exhaust stack on the west side of Units 1 and 2 has been confirmed, the top half has been dismantled with the help of local companies to reduce the risk of collapse. In preparation for future tsunami, construction work of another seawall is underway. As the result of measures to prevent the dispersion of radioactive materials, ground surfaces are being paved, and this work has been completed in most areas. After the accident, workers had to wear protective clothing and full face masks in every area of the power station. Currently, workers can wear regular uniforms and simple dust masks in 96% of the entire site. Some areas can now be accessed without wearing any protective equipment, not even masks or gloves.
This is the large rest house equipped with a cafeteria that serves hot meals made with food grown in Fukushima, a convenience store, and other facilities. And also a full medical care facility has been built to support decommissioning efforts. The new administration office building and the partner company's building have been built side by side and the close proximity allows TEPCO employees and contractors to work in unity. Progress has also been made with contaminated water countermeasures. Contaminated water is created when rainwater leaking through the damaged roof and groundwater flowing into the building comes into contact with radioactive materials. Therefore, ground surfaces have been paved to prevent rainwater from seeping into the ground and groundwater is pumped up using wells around the buildings. A frozen soil wall that surrounds the buildings has also been formed to reduce the amount of groundwater flowing into the buildings. Measures to prevent rainwater from seeping into the damaged buildings are also underway. Groundwater is prevented from flowing into the ocean by a steel wall that was constructed at the edge of the port area. Groundwater that accumulates at this barrier is pumped up using wells located inside the wall, thereby keeping the environment inside the port safe. In the sea area surrounding the power station, surveys are performed in various places to measure the concentrations of radioactive materials which have been lowered to and being stably kept at levels below national standards. Radioactive materials and contaminated water are treated using multi-nuclide removal equipment, referred to as ALPS and other equipment. With the exception of tritium, concentrations of radioactive materials are lowered and the treated water is stored in welded tanks, which are more reliable and less likely to leak. The decommissioning process is expected to take 30 to 40 years. We shall continue to move forward steadily and safely with this task in cooperation with our domestic and international partners.